Today I'm talking to people about, uh, about love. How would you describe the feeling of being in love? What do you remember about falling in love with each other? When you were growing up, or even just throughout your life, did you have any role models for love that you looked up to? Could you tell me your name and where you're from? Sure, my name is Peter. I'm from just outside of DC. My name is Rebecca. My name is Thomas. We're from Chico. So my name is Jacinta. I'm actually, I'm from the Navajo Nation, Northern Arizona. My name is Justina and I'm also from the Navajo Nation in okay. Arizona. I'm Mike, I'm from the Philippines. I'm Raul from South City. I'm Wendy from Vallejo. And I'm Holly from Oregon. And I'm curious, have either of you ever been in love before? Yes, I have. Yes. Have you been in love before? Yes, I have. Have either of you ever been in love before? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yes. You're a couple? Are you married? or? We're married. You're married? Yeah. How long have you been married? Um, we got married in 2017, but we've been together since we were 21, and we're 31 now. How long have you guys been together? Six-ish Six. years? How long did you guys know each other before you decided to take the leap in three, four years? Four years. Mm -hmm. You've been married for how long? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, it's been eight years. Can I ask you, what does it feel like to fall in love? Oh, God. <laughs> you take that. <laughs> uh, it feels... I don't know. I'm trying to, like, think back to that time. I was really young, so I just... I guess just a little bit scary, but exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of novelty, right? So there's a lot of newness. Oh, she's different. Uh, there's these things about her that I'm attracted to. But then once you get to know her and it's not as new, it's not as attractive anymore. <laughs> but you learn to appreciate it. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, yeah, so it's a, yeah. Uh, falling in love is a different kind of love than Hey, eight years of marriage love okay. where there's you've gone through some hard times well I mean besides the obvious things that you know like you can't stop thinking about them um, I think you start to come outside of yourself and imagine what it would be like to experience things through the eyes of another person so in some ways I feel that falling in love allows us to connect with um, that is that which is outside of ourselves and perhaps maybe connects us with all of humanity in a way uh -huh. because we stop thinking about ourselves all the time and we think oh I wonder what my loved one would think of this view or how would my loved one enjoy this treat that I'm having right now so I think it's a, a way of not thinking of oneself all the time. How would you characterize or how would you describe the experience of falling in love with someone? Oh, falling in love is fantastic. It's exhilarating and, I don't know, makes your heart happy. What did it feel like for you when you've fallen in love a few times? It just, it, it brought, you know, it brought meaning to life, you know, it, um, the value of people and just how frail, you know, we really are and how we really need each other. I'm currently in a relationship and I really love, you know, who I'm with and I've come to learn different things in this relationship, this is the one that I'm in with my family and how there are similarities and I really love that part because I can be myself and as if I'm with my family and with my boyfriend, it's, it's comforting, it's very... Uh, Safe, and what I really love is that on a similar level, I'm really funny, and I only show that side to people that I'm really close to, and, and so I always show that side of my family to my family, and that's one of the qualities that I don't show a lot of people. So, you know, having that relationship with my boyfriend is it's very it's comforting. What do you remember about? falling in love with each other? Well, it's gradual. It's, yeah. That's what I remember. We're actually friends from college, and then we fell in love right before we graduated. Who made the first move? I didn't know. Were you nervous about that? Was there, were, did you have some doubts at all about taking that leap? Oh, yeah. 
And how did you end up overcoming those doubts? What were you telling yourself in your head? Was there anything that you were saying to yourself to get your... Well, I, I was almost blacked out drunk at the time, so... <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't remember yeah, anything remember. the next day. But you remember? Yeah. What do you remember about that? I remember that he did not remember anything at all. <laughs> <clears throat> what is that love like now, in the present moment, for you and your wife? It's more of a... We've gone through ups and downs, and it's a commitment that we made to each other. Um, and that's what kind of keeps us together, even though there's definitely hard times. Yeah. Uh, um, especially with these. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh, it's, it's uh, something that's more of a steadfast, even though we go through a lot of different things, um, we're committed to each other. I think for me, a lot of people nowadays, like everything else, love is disposable. Very few people see it as a forever thing, which to me is how very far sad. You, how far can you get yeah. me? Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, where's the next person? Because, you know, I don't know. I'm done here. Not like our parents' generation, you know? They get married in high school and they're still married, you know? How would you differentiate the love between someone that you love romantically versus like the love of a friend or the love of a family member? I think that the perception is that a love of a family member is you feel a certain solidity, a solidness in your relationship with them and that you draw comfort from that and joy from that. Um, a friend is more the type of love of shared experiences and um, perhaps you can even lean on them emotionally for support. Romantic love to me is one of endless depths. Like there's always potential there for greater connection, greater intimacy. It's like a myriad experience or multifaceted jewel that seems to have endless possibilities to it. You've got your beautiful daughter here. You've got three kids, three kids. right? Is she the oldest or is she She's the youngest? She's our middle. Middle child, okay. So tell me what it's like to love a child as a father versus like having been in the position of being a son yourself and having parents to love. It's a different kind of love for sure. It's a more of a selfless love. So I'm definitely not even second, third, or fourth. I'm like way <laughs> on the bottom. Once you have kids, uh, everything is for them and, and for what we want the best for them. So, awesome. um, so yeah, it's a different kind of love, yeah. Would you say there is a major difference between how it feels to love, say, your sister or a family member or the love that you feel romantically with somebody? I think that there are similarities, um, just maybe not as deep. Love between family, you know, it, it, there's a lot of pain that happens, especially when you're trying to communicate things to them. I don't think that um, people know how to communicate with each other, and sometimes things that you say out of love, somebody can misinterpret as hurt or pain. I think love hurts sometimes. For me, on a family basis, I found love to be very comforting, a safe place. Um, it's not always pretty, but you know, that's not the great side of love. But in my opinion, the, the good outweighs the bad. Talk to me about the love between friends. How does that differ from romantic love? The expectations. Yeah. Um, I don't have to constantly try to win her over, and we have enough space in our lives where you know we can still live and grow and still contribute to each other. And I think you know when people are in full-time relationships, they they forget that. And so when we do see each other, we really value that time that we have together. Yeah, I agree. And we could go for weeks or months not talking, and it's like every time we do, it's back where we were. You know. Whereas, I don't know. Living with someone day to day, uh, I don't know, it gets a little monotonous to some people, not to me. I'm always happy to see whoever I'm with when I get home. <laughs> Did you guys have any role models for love growing up? Were there people that you, you looked up to and thought, okay, that's who I want to behave like when I'm, when I'm older and I'm falling in love with somebody? Uh, yeah, I mean, my parents were always really strong, like, they had a strong relationship, so. 
that was always uh, something I looked up to. And they have a very healthy yeah, marriage. Yeah. Always, I mean, they fought and made up just like normal people did, and we got to see all of it. So, yeah. For me, my parents, my mom and dad. Yeah, that's how what I want us to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, my mom is close to my father's family. Yeah, just like um, she's like their daughter. My parents loved me very much, but not each other. And so as an adult, I have sought out examples of romantic love in literature and in other people's relationships to see how it's done. Are there any books that come to mind, like when you speak of literature? Ironically, James Joyce's Ulysses, the last chapter, where Molly Bloom speaks of her love, is tremendously romantic and inspiring. And so I read that as a treatise on mature romantic love. I don't know, I have several family members who got married young and stayed married forever, you know? So I saw that growing up, and it's disheartening to me to see how it actually goes in real life now. No, nobody takes it that seriously. Were they just aunts, uncles, or friends, uh, My parents friends? are still married. My grandparents were married until both of them passed, and I have aunt and uncles that are still married. They got married in high school or right out of high school, so, right. you know. But that was back in the late 50s, early 60s when that was the norm, and it's just not now. I would have to say my dad. <clears throat> um, my dad passed away when we were kids, and at a young age, my mom had to take care of five kids on her own. And during their marriage, she expressed the things that she wanted in life, and my dad always encouraged her. She joined the military, and that that's hard, you know? Raising five kids, you have a husband who's also working. He encouraged her anyways, and that's that's the type of love I have with my partner. Yeah, I would have to say the same thing with little time that I had with my dad. Seeing him showing his love and affection to not just our family, but to his family. My fondest memories are of Christmas, the holidays. And my dad, didn't matter who it was, he just had a gift for everyone. And he just loved his family so much. And that's where I feel like I love that part of my dad. Sorry. And yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate the being yeah. candid with me, with a complete stranger. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Of All right, take Good care. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for yeah, taking the time. No problem. What is it called again? Your channel? Uh, World of Nuance. World of Nuance. Yeah, yeah. We will look it up. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Sorry, what's your content? I'm trying to focus on topics that have some some depth. This is like not as an easy of a topic for many people to, to talk about openly. You have to go to a vulnerable place, but you, you don't know if you're ready to do that with a complete stranger right yeah. in the middle of the street. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. But it's it's uh it's a good experience.